I know that most people are afraid of men. Some of us have horror stories about that teacher who didn't believe in them and held them back. My mom can tell you one of those stories about me. Today's talk won't get you to be any less afraid of math. If anything, it would do the exact opposite. But if it helps you to know that you are not alone and that other people suffered a lot more than you probably ever did, you might just keep watching. Today I'll explain one of the reasons why Senator Elizabeth Warren lost the Democratic presidential nomination to President Joe Biden in 2020. This happened six years ago, but it's still a good way to learn a little bit of math and remind us that yes, we'll use math in real world. First, allow me to introduce Principal Component Analysis, PCA. PCA is a multivariate analysis that reduces the complexity of datasets while preserving the data covariance. The outcome can be visualized on colorful scatter plots, ideally with only a minimal loss of information. With PCA, you can take any quantity of datasets, calculate the principal components, and plot the outcome in a simple colorful scatter plot. In population genetics, PCA is used to reduce the dimensionality of genotype data, which typically consists of dozens or millions of SNPs representing the dimensions. PCA converts the set of observations of possibly correlated variables, which are the genotypes, into a set of values of linearly uncorrelated variables, which are the principal components. PCA's most attractive property for population geneticists is that its distances between the clusters allegedly reflect the genetic and geographic distances between them. Because of this property, scientists have been using PCA like some anti-magic eight ball that allows them to see the past, generating nearly a quarter million papers while doing so. In 2022, I published a paper showing that PCA is a highly biased technique. I showed that PCA results can be almost completely determined by the experimenter, and I called to reevaluate those nearly quarter million papers. The paper ranked 8th most read paper in scientific reports of 2022, and I got this nice sticker. I'm kidding, of course. I wish I had gotten the sticker. I got a picture of the sticker. To understand why PCA is one of the most dangerous methods in genetics, let's go back to one of the most bizarre stories of US politics starting with the 2012 Senate elections where Senator Warren ran for a second term. Ahead of the Massachusetts election, Warren decided to preempt criticism of her faking her heritage by taking a DNA test and releasing the result to the public. Rather than choosing a credible genetic company, Warren relied on Carlos Bustamante, a Stanford professor and expert in DNA, winner of the Genius MacArthur Fellowship. Bustamante's conclusion was that while the vast majority of the individual's ancestry is European, the results strongly support the existence of an admixed Native American ancestor in the individual's pedigree likely in the range of 6 to 12 generations ago, which, amazingly enough, completely matched Warren's story. That did not go well with Chief Berther, who criticized a small proportion of Native American ancestry in Warren's DNA. Amazingly enough, Trump demanded that she apologize for the DNA results of her own test and for claiming Native American ancestry. Native Americans were also unpleased with Warren's decision if the DNA tests brought a barrage of negative headlines and opinion pieces with Native Americans claiming that there is a lot more to being a Native American than DNA. In plain English, most if not all Native Americans today are mixed to various degrees. Accepting the validity of a DNA test, no matter how accurate it is, will open a can of worms with respect to who is a true Native American and who is not. In even plainer English, Native Americans do not want to let DNA decide who is Native American and who isn't. Warren ended up apologizing and retracting her Native American identity. I know that I've done mistakes. I'm sorry for the harm that I've caused. I've listened and I've learned, she says. But why, you may ask? What about her DNA tests? After all, she got the seal of approval of her Native American ancestry, uh, so to speak. Let's take a closer look at Warren's DNA results, carried out by Professor Carlos Bustamante, who has also graciously included his biography in the report. Wait, are we doing that now? Bustamante used two methods. The first one was local ancestry analysis. In this analysis, the DNA is broken into smaller pieces and each piece is assigned one of three ancestries, European, African, and Native American. It doesn't matter if you don't know genetics to know that this analysis is nonsense. Excluding Asian from the analysis will necessarily inflate the number of Native American regions because Native Americans split from Asians. Excluding Eastern European, as was probably done, although it is unclear, will have the same effect. In other words, 
If foreign has some Central Asian or Eastern European DNA, it would appear as Native American. In the second analysis, Carlos Bustamante used principal component analysis, which he elevated to be a machine learning technique, citing November et al. paper. However, the November et al. paper says nothing of that sort. Bustamante knows that, after all, he wrote it. We say he's utilizing machine learning, and that's true, but then again, so is multiplication, but no one claims that multiplication is the principal component method, and no one argues that the multiplication table whispers to them profound insights. My guess is that Bustamante was showing up to the poor senator. The first PCA results showed that Warren's DNA clusters along the trajectory of European and Native Americans somewhere with the admixed individuals. Recall what I told you before about mixed Native Americans. Of course, we cannot be certain that any of those Native Americans are unmixed. They're most likely all mixed with Europeans and Africans to various degrees. In the second analysis, Bustamante calculated PCA only for a Warren segment that came up in the previous analysis as Native Americans. And, it, and surprise, surprise, Warren was stuck in sight and sound between a couple of Native American tribes. How about that? Before we refute this report, I would like to clarify that Warren would never publish her own DNA. Without her DNA, there is absolutely nothing that can be said about her ancestry. Fortunately, we don't need her DNA to refute Professor Bustamante's report. If we can use the same test to show that Native American ancestry comes up for individuals who certainly do not have that ancestry, then the test is meaningless. In plain English, we will do what students in Science 101 learn, test the null hypothesis. These four PCA plots were calculated for four different people, a Pakistani, an Iranian, an even Russian, and a Moscow Russian. As you can see, although none is Native American by a long shot, they all clustered with Native Americans. Analysis C corresponds to the second analysis of Bustamante, where only the test samples and Native Americans are plotted. Note that while Bustamante used only genomic segments supposedly of Native American ancestry, I used all the markers as is. Yet, we got the same results. Those results show you that Bustamante's test is invalid, and that no conclusion can be drawn about Warren's ancestry from his report. To understand why this is the case, we need to go back to understand how PCA works. This is a topic that I covered in the previous lecture, but briefly, in, this, in its first step, PCA calculates a simple average of the markers of all the samples. One sample does not carry enough weight to keep the distribution. A fair test would be to use an even population size. That's a lot of warrants. Of course, we'll have to wait for Elon Musk to develop cloning technology first to become operational before we can do that. Professor Bustamante's test was designed to uncover Native American ancestry, whether it is there or not. Warren made a bad choice, but it's hard to hold it against her. She's used to fight bad banks, not bad science. But then again, that's what it takes to be a president. A much more reliable test would have been gene pool tests, such as I implement in GPS Origins. Here, ancestry is assigned to regional gene pools, which are calibrated and tested against the most native populations of each region. An even better choice is to use Native Americans' ancient DNA, which were available back then. I don't know why it was not used. Somebody probably wanted to go home early. Had Warren taken a DNA test now, I would advise her to use ancient DNA origins which uses ancient gene pools and allows her to compare her DNA with the ancient DNA of Native Americans before the Colombian period. All in all, I hope that you can see now why PCA is one of the most dangerous methods in genetics and how it can be used to generate whatever results one may wish. Let me remind you again that we still know nothing about Senator Warren's ancestry just in case this issue comes up again. I wish her all the best.